In this video, we're going to talk about two simple tests that you can do at home to see maybe if you have a compression fracture of either your thoracic spine or your lumbar spine. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel, Ed Debu, physical therapist. Elizabeth Debu, physical therapist. And today we're going to talk about a couple of easy tests that you can do at home. We see a lot of osteoporosis patients through here. And so a couple of things that are common, unfortunately, are compression fractures as we start to lose bone density, especially through the vertebral body. So these are two tests that you can do to see if maybe that you've possibly suffered a compression fracture, and if so, what you should do about it. The first test we'll talk about is the rib pelvic test. And this is to determine if you've had a compression fracture possibly in the lumbar spine. And you'll need someone to help you with this, but they don't have to be trained in anything. They just have to have some basic palpation skills. We're measuring the distance between the lower part of the rib cage and the upper part of the iliac crest here. You should be able to get both your fingers in there. And as long as you get both fingers in there, it means there possibly hasn't been a collapse. Sometimes I'll have patients that talk to me and they'll say literally they feel like their rib cage is sitting on the top of their iliac crest. And if that's the case, unfortunately, you may have had a compression fracture and literally your rib cage is quite a bit lower. So let's see what it looks like on Elizabeth. So what we'll do is we'll find the lower part of the rib cage on her, the top of the iliac crest. Right there is the lower part of the rib cage. And that there's the iliac crest and you just come right in here and see if you can sink in both fingers. And for her, I can probably fit even three fingers in through there. Thank you. So we don't have to necessarily worry about her of having a lumbar compression fracture. The second test we're gonna talk about is called the occipital wall test. And basically what it is, is how far away your occiput is against the wall. And we're gonna demonstrate with Elizabeth and we'll, we'll talk about it. But what we're looking for here is to see if we possibly have any thoracic spine compression fractures. So we normally have this little curve of our thoracic spine, but unfortunately, if someone has osteoporosis, we get these little wedge fractures. And so what happens is the normal kyphosis becomes almost a hyperkyphosis, and they lose the ability to unfortunately straighten up because we actually have a loss of bone in the front of the vertebral body, which is causing that compression fracture. So for the second test, what you'll do is you're basically going to stand. I know you can't see her feet, but her feet are up against the wall. And the idea is to stand up as tall as you can and try to bring your occiput, which is the back of your skull, to the wall. So in this situation here, since her head can touch, this would be a negative test. And so we don't have to necessarily worry about Elizabeth having a thoracic spine compression fractures. However, now simulate if you had a kyphosis through your thoracic spine. This is what I'm talking to you about, about that hyperkyphosis that we might have. So imagine that you've got this. So go ahead and come up against the wall. There you go. You've got the kyphosis there that doesn't straighten out. And then you try to bring your head back, but that's as far as you can. And this is the distance that we're measuring. The idea is we want to measure the distance from the back of the occiput to the wall. If that distance is greater than two inches, chances are that you've had a compression fracture of that thoracic spine. So what happens if you tested positive for one of the two tests? Either the, you couldn't get two fingers in there or you had an occiput that was over two inches away. I mean, definitely going back to their physician. Yeah, yep. you go check in with your physician and perhaps even get a DEXA. That's right, because you had a DEXA pretty recently. I had recently. a DEXA mm -hmm. pretty recently. It doesn't indicate any osteoporotic changes or anything that we're worried about, but I'm still working on these things because we're all about prevention. Absolutely. We're all about having this be the lifestyle that we live and not just reacting when we have a challenge. Absolutely. Like what are your favorite posture exercises that you like to give people? Well, I love to do mm -hmm. and I love to give people uh -huh. wall oh, angels. Yeah. Oh yeah. These are just so good and they feel really good too. I'll put a link right up here to the wall angel video. <laughs> wall angels. I love the wall angels. If you've yeah. been a client of ours, you know we love them. Yeah. And another one that I love to do myself, that I do daily, and I also suggest that all of my patients do, is bird dog. And what you do for bird dog is you're gonna get down on your hands and knees with equal weight bearing through all four surfaces. And then you're going to unweight your leg, you're gonna unweight an arm, and then you're going to bring it in. And if you do have osteoporotic changes, we really don't want a lot of arching of the back. We want to keep you in mostly neutral. So out, in, out, in. I say at least 10 times. And then after that, I do 10 times on each side. 
10 times. And then I go back to the initial side, leg extended, arm extended, and I count to 10, bring it in, count to 10, bring it in. And I do that another five times and I think that's a really good stabilization exercise. If you'd like to learn more about osteoporosis exercises, uh, check out livewell50.com. We've got a whole series of specific exercises that work on not only what Elizabeth talked about too, but other foam roller and postural exercises. And yoga. And yoga, exactly right. So thanks for watching, guys. If there's any questions, please leave it down below, and uh, we will see you soon.